Hey, Shalom, Big Daddy Biggs here, productreviewdude.com. This is uh, January the 14th, and the reading today is Exodus 3, 4, 5, and 6. Hope you've been enjoying this, the Tree of Life version of the Bible, uh, Through the Bible in a Year with Big Daddy Biggs. And if you want a copy of this Bible, if you want a, you know, a hard copy of this Bible, you can go to the link down below this video on the website, productreviewdude.com. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. And it's an affiliate link, so it'll take you to Amazon. You can purchase a copy of it there. I uh, appreciate you. If you like these videos, share them with your friends. Maybe they'll be a blessing to them if they've been a blessing to you. So thanks a lot, and let's just get on with the scriptures. Exodus chapter 3, Angel of Adonai in a Burning Bush. Now Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. So he led the flock to the farthest end of the wilderness, coming to the mountain of God, Horeb. Then the angel of Adonai appeared to him in a flame of fire with, with, from within a bush. So he looked and saw the bush burning with fire, yet it was not consumed. Moses thought, I will go now and see this great sight. Why is the bush not burnt? Then when Adonai saw that he turned saw that he turned to look, he called to him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. So he answered, Hen and I. Then he said, Come closer. Or I'm sorry, come no closer. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then Adonai said, I have surely seen the affliction of my, fa of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their slave masters, for I know their pains. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians." to bring them up out of that land into a good and large land, a land flowing with milk and honey, into the place of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Now behold, the cry of Benai Israel has come to me. Moreover, I have seen the oppression that the Egyptians have, afflict, have inflicted on them. Come now, I will send you to Pharaoh, so that you may bring my people Benai Yisrael, out from Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring Benai Yisrael out of Egypt? So he said, I will surely be with you, so that, so that will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, Suppose I go to Benai Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? What should I say to them? God answered Moses, I am who I am. Then he said, You are to say to Benai Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, You are to say to Benai Israel, Adonai, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and the name by which I should be remembered from generation to generation. Go now, gather the elders of Israel together, and say to them, Adonai, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have been paying close attention to you and have seen what is done to you in Egypt. <clears throat> so I promise I will bring you out of the affliction of Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, to a land flowing with milk and honey. They will listen to your voice, so you will go, you along with the elders of Israel, to the king of Egypt, and say to him, Adonai, the God of the Hebrews, has met with, has met with us. Now please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness, so that we may sacrifice to our God. Nevertheless, I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go, except by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders that I will do in the midst of it. 
After that, he will let you go. Then I shall grant these people favor in the eyes of the Egyptians. So it will happen that when you go, you will not leave empty-handed. Every woman is to ask her neighbor and every woman and the woman who lives in her house for silver and gold jewelry and clothing. You will put them on your sons and your daughters, so you will plunder the Egyptians. Chapter 4. Objections and Excuses Then Moses said, But look, they will not believe me or listen to my voice. They will say, Adonai has not appeared to you. So Adonai said to him, What is it? What is that in your hand? A staff, he said. Then he said, cast it on the ground. When he cast it to the ground, it became a serpent. So Moses fled from before it. Then Adonai said to Moses, stretch out your hand and take it by the tail. So he put out his hand, laid hold of it, and it became a staff in his hand. So is this is so that they may believe Adonai, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has appeared to you. Adonai also said to him, Now put your hand within your cloak. So he put his hand inside, and when he took it out, his hand had za'arat, white as snow. Then he said, Put your hand back into your cloak. So he put his hand back in, and when he took it out, It was restored again as the rest of his skin. Then he said, If they do not believe you or listen to the voice of the first sign, they will believe the message of the latter sign. But if they do not believe even these two signs nor listen to your voice, you are to take the water out of the river and pour it on dry land. The water which you take out of the river will become blood on the ground. But Moses said to Adonai, Adonai, I am not a man of words, not yesterday, nor the day before, nor since you have spoken to your servant, because I have a slow mouth and a heavy tongue. So Adonai said to him, Who made man's mouth? Or who makes a man mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, Adonai? Now go, I will be with your mouth and teach you what to say. But he said, Please, please send it by another hand. Then the anger of Adonai was kindled against Moses, so he said, In fact, Aaron the Levite is your brother. I know that he can speak well. Moreover, he is on his way to meet you. He he is on his way to meet you. When he sees you, he will be, be glad in his heart. You are to speak to him and put the words in his mouth. I will be with you. I will be with your mouth and with his and teach you what to do. He will be your spokesman to the people so that he may act as your mouthpiece for you, and it will be as if you were as God for him. Now then, you must take this staff in your hand and do the signs. Moses returns to Egypt. So Moses went out, so Moses went, returned to his father-in-law, Jethro and said to him, Please let me go so I may return to my kinsmen who are in Egypt and see whether they are still alive. Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. Then Adonai said to Moses in Midian, Go return to Egypt for all men, for all the men that sought you, your life are dead. So Moses took his wife and his sons, set them on a donkey, and returned to the land of Egypt. Moses took the staff of God in his hand. Adonai said to Moses, When you go back to Egypt, see that you do all the wonders before Pharaoh that I have put in your hand. Still I will harden his heart and will not let the people go. You are to say to Pharaoh, This is what Adonai says, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So I have said to you, let my son go, that they may serve me, but you have refused to let them go. Go, behold, I will slay your son, your firstborn. It happened along the way at a lodging place that Adonai met him and sought to kill him. But Zipporah took a flint, cut off the foreskin of her son, and threw it at his feet, saying, You are surely a bridegroom of blood to me. She said, a bridegroom of blood because of the circumcision. Then he let him alone. Now Adonai said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. 
So he went and met with him at the mountain of God and kissed him. Then Moses told Aaron all the words of Adonai, which he had been sent, along with all the signs that he had commanded him to do. Then Moses and Aaron went and assembled all the elders of Benai Israel. Aaron spoke all the words that Adonai had spoken to Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. So the people believed when they heard that Adonai had remembered Benai Israel and had been their affliction, they bowed their heads and worshipped. Exodus chapter 5 Pharaoh will not let Israel go. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, This is what Adonai, God of Israel, says, Let my people go, so that they may hold a feast for me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, Who is Adonai? that I should listen to his voice and let Israel go. I do not know Adonai, and besides, I will not let Israel go. They answered, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness, so we may sacrifice to Adonai, our God, or else he may strike us with pestilence or with the sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Why do you, Moses and Aaron, make the people break loose from their work? Go to your labors. Then Pharaoh said, Look, the people of the land are now so numerous, yet you would have them rest for their labors. Then on the same day Pharaoh commanded the slave masters of the people and of their foremen, saying, You are not to give the people any more straw to make bricks. As before, let them go and gather straw for themselves but impose on them the quota of bricks that they made previously. Don't reduce it, for they are lazy. That's why they cry out, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let even heavier work be laid upon the men, so that they must labor, paying no attention to deceptive words. Then the slave masters of the people went out, along with their officers, and they spoke to the people, saying, This is what Pharaoh says, I will not give you straw. Go and get straw for yourselves wherever you can find it, for there will be no reduction of your work. So the people were scattered throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. But the slave masters pressured, saying, Fulfill your work, your daily amount, just as when there was straw. Moreover, the foreman of Benai Israel, whom Pharaoh's slave masters had sent over them, were beaten and asked, Why haven't you met your quota of bricks, both yesterday and today like before? The foreman of Benai Israel came and cried out to Pharaoh, saying, Why do you deal this way with your servants? No straw is given to your servants, yet they say to us, Make bricks, and look, your servants are beaten. But it is your own people at fault. But he said, Lazy, you're lazy. That's why you are saying, Let us go and sacrifice to Adonai. So go now and work. No straw will be given to you, but you must deliver the quota of bricks. So the foreman of Benai Israel saw that they were in trouble when they were told, You are not to reduce the number of bricks from day to day. Then they met Moses and Aaron, who were waiting for them as they came from Pharaoh. So they said to them, May Adonai look upon you and judge, because you have made a, us a stench in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants, putting a sword in their hand to kill us. So Moses returned to Adonai and said, Adonai, why have you brought evil on these people? Is this why you sent me? Even since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought evil on these people. You have not delivered your people at all. Exodus chapter 6 How will Pharaoh listen? Adonai said to Moses, Now you will see what I am doing to what I am going to do to Pharaoh. By way of a strong hand he will let them go and drive them out of his land. God spoke further to Moses and said to him, I am Adonai. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, as El Shaddai. Yet by my name, Adonai, I I made myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage where they journeyed. Furthermore, 
I have heard the groaning of Benai Yisrael, whom the Egyptians are keeping in bondage, so I have re- remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to Benai Yisrael, I am Adonai, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will deliver you from their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you to myself as a people, and I will be your God. You will know that I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So I will bring you into a land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and give it to you as an inheritance. I am Adonai. Moses spoke this way to Benai Israel, but they did not listen to him because of their broken spirit and cruel bondage. So Adonai told Moses, Go speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that, he, so that will he let Benai Israel go out of the land. But Moses said to Adonai, Benai Israel have not listened to me, so how would Pharaoh listen to me? I, who have uncircumcised lips, then Adonai spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave to them a charge for Benai Israel and Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring Benai Israel out of the land of Egypt. These are the heads of their fathers' houses. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, were Hanuk, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. These are the families of Reuben. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, uh, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shaul, the son of a Canaanite woman. These are the families of Simeon. These are the names of the sons of Levi according to their generations. Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Levi lived 137 years. The sons of Gershon were Libni and Shemai according to their families. The sons of Kohath were Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel. Kohath lived 133 years. The sons of Merari were Mahil, Li, Ma- Mali, and Mushi. These are the families of the Levites according to their generations. Amram married Jochebed, his father's sister, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. Amram, Amram lived 137 years. The sons of Ishar were Korah, Nepheg, and Zikri. The sons of Uziel were Mashiel, Elzaphan, and Sithri. Aaron married Elisheba, daughter of Amenadav, sister of Nashan, and she bore him Nadab and Abihu, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. The sons of Korah were Asir, Okana, and Abiasaph. These are the families of the Korites. Eleazar, Aaron's son, married one of the daughters of Putiel, and her and she bore him Phinehas. These are the heads of the ancestral houses of the Levites, according to their families. These are the same Aaron and Moses, to whom Adonai said, Bring Benai Israel out from the land of Egypt, according to their divisions. These are the ones that spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring Benai Yisrael out from Egypt. These are that same Moses and Aaron. So it happened on the day when Adonai spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, that Adonai said to Moses, I am Adonai, tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, everything that I tell you. But Moses said to Adonai, I am of uncircumcised lips, so how would Pharaoh listen to me? Thank you for joining us, and I must say that when it comes to these names in the Bible, I too am of un- uncircumcised lips. Uh, please bear with me. Y'all have a good day. Appreciate you being here. Love you. God loves you. See you next time. All right? Bye-bye. Shalom.